Hello, welcome. This is a presentation about an interactive flow chart builder for SharePoint. This is a follow-up video to one I did recently about doing an organization chart. What I'm going to show today is a lot more flexible. You can build a process diagram and use whatever shapes and colors and draw out any kind of process you want just using SharePoint lists. So this is something very flexible and a great way to map out a work process and go ahead and use that for planning and to show to your users directly in SharePoint. So let's get started. Okay, here I am at the template. This is linked below the video. This is simply called the flowchart template at SharePoint-Boards.com. This is part of the subscription set of templates. If you have not yet used this tool, you do have access to 20 free templates. You can go to the site and sign up and try that out. And if you like it, you can um, access all the templates that are available. So let's take a look uh, to understand how this works. The idea here is that we're using a SharePoint list to generate blocks in a process diagram or a flowchart. Lots of different names for this. The settings from the template screen are pretty straightforward. Uh, you can, of course, set your title like this. Um, and then you can do some things to uh, adjust the uh, background color. Um, you can, you know, set that to whatever you think looks best. Um, so I'll just, you know, well, <laughs> I want something a little bit uh, lighter. Let's do, um, let's go back to that light background. And then you can also adjust the hover background to whatever you like. Um, and then what I would also recommend is you take a look at the different themes that just gives you some ideas, you can see that it's possible to also go with a dark background. Do take note of the uh, node section um, because that's very important for this template. Now this does require download of a list template, a SharePoint list template, and that's easy to get. Just click on the link that says flowchart. That will download an S TP file to your local computer. Small file and that's just a template which contains a definition of all the fields and some formatting, special formatting for some of the columns. So that is the first thing that you must do. Um, and then if you are new to um, using SharePoint list templates, um, the next thing you should do is go to this manage list templates page it will give you detailed instructions which explain any steps needed to set that up. That simply uploads the template to your SharePoint environment and then you can go ahead and create this list and be able to take advantage of this really fun template. Now over in SharePoint, I've already got a list going. Um, I've got a chart that I'm gonna do called Help Tickets and you can see uh, some of the field settings that are used for each of this. Now when you're using this tool, you are not going to have to update records from this view. You're going to be able to do that from a Canvas view. So let's go ahead and switch over to that. So I'm going to go ahead and use this first template, except I'm going to make the canvas width a bit wider. Um, let's go ahead and stretch that out to 1200 and I'll make the height 600. And then I want to fill in the title, so I'll say help tickets process. And then once you've got all that set, you just need to do copy template, follow instructions in the pop-up window, then come back over to SharePoint. And this is a view template, so I go to the view selector, go to format current view, advanced mode, and then select all and paste. There we go. Now I'm in the Canvas style mode. So this is 
used both for making updates and also for display to your users. Now you can tell I've already done some layout configuration. You're going to be starting with a blank canvas, but just so you understand, I'm going to show you how you can um, update elements, move them, and change the appearance. Um, it's very easy to do that. Okay, so just like with any SharePoint list, uh, you can click on the new button to add records. And then the first field you're going to see is chart name. This is key because every time you want to do a new flow chart, it, you want to use a different chart name for all the elements in the chart. And that will allow you to do a filtered view, uh, which is going to just show the elements for that specific flow chart that you're working on. Um, so that one's key. Make sure you use that same chart name for all the elements on a flow chart that you're doing, and then you can do filtered views for each flow chart that you want. Okay, and then, um, of course, I'm going to do a label. Um, I'm just going to say example in this case because I don't necessarily need this. And that's all I need to get started. By default, it's going to place it in the upper left. Um, if the screen does that to you, just do a refresh and you'll see it. Okay, so there's my block. Obviously, there's nothing going on with it. Um, and then what I'm going to do is just, um, you know, I can move it over. So um, I just keep editing and clicking that button. Now it's going to overlap other elements. So what I need to do is um, just keep moving it over until that's not overlapping anything. All right, so now it's over on the left hand side. Now I'm going to show you how you can um, change its appearance and other attributes and things like this. Now it is important when you're going to edit, there's a title that pops up it says click lower right corner to edit um, that's key because the way this is set up uh, by design um, it's not going to open this dialog window unless you click on the lower right so just something to bear in mind okay so let's run through the title excuse me the fields that can be updated just so you have a little bit of an idea how that works okay so obviously the text we can change um, this is the last step okay so when I update that you can see it updates real time and then uh, let's go through some of the other characteristics obviously I may want to make some font it's bigger um, and each one's gonna be a little different depending on how much text you put in there and then um, let's go down to some of the, you can change the text color so um, maybe you want something that stands out a little bit more um, I could for example make the text red um, now I've got red text and then the next color setting is for the background. So maybe I want this to be a special color. Um, you know, that's up to you, um, but you've got many options to choose from. So there's colors and font, font size. Um, and then you can change the shape. Obviously that's a very important one. Okay, so there's lots of options in the shape picker. You can do some searching if you want. In process diagrams, shapes tend to uh, signify different meanings. For example, oftentimes a diamond is used for a decision in a flowchart. Um, you can pick from any of those choices. Okay, so you can see it just changes immediately to whatever choice I want. There's lots of shapes options, um, so you can just you know go through there and switch it to whatever. Uh, looks nice to you. Now sometimes you may just need uh, what's referred to as a connector. Um, so let me show you how that works. In that case I don't really need anything other than some lines and in order to do that when you go up to the go to the uh, shapes selections there are options to do only lines. So if I do cross lines um, you'll notice that it's showing just the lines only. So there may be a situation where, you know, that's all that you need. So you can, um, you know, use that to connect different elements. So I could move that around. Um, let's do uh, move it down. And then uh, sometimes you just need to refresh the screen. You can see when you add that, it's initially going to overlap other elements, but you can just keep moving it over, move it over, 
until you get it where it needs to be, and then you're good to go. Okay, so there's an element with just lines. Okay, so what's the other part of this? These arrows, there's arrows that connect all these elements together. So how do you control that? I'm gonna show you exactly how, it's very easy. So there's this connector section that's in a gray box. And if you click in there, you notice there's four different fields. That's for the top, right, bottom, and left of the shape that you have selected. So in my case, I need to connect these two elements together. So the way I can do that is to select. You either got none, line, or arrow. Okay, you can see now I've got an arrow pointing to my element, and then I just need to go to the preceding element, and I need a line to connect that. And that's the way that you can connect elements together. Um, so just for fun, we'll keep going with that. Let's do a down arrow. Um, so I just or I'm going to do a line, and then I'm going to do, let's do this. Let's change this to um, a line going back to the green circle. So I can scroll through here and do line up left. Okay, and then I need to do a line connector for the top of that. So I just do line. And then I need to do another line. So I just pick line. And then on this, I need to set it to have an arrow. So I just pick arrow for the right side of that. And you can see that's how you can draw a line through an empty area in your process diagram. This is um, expandable. You can make lots of elements. So in my diagram, you know, it looks like I've got about 10 blocks, but I can make this canvas size as large as I want. It can be as many rows and columns as I want, and then I can do the things like zoom the browser window in and out if I need to, just to uh, be able to see the elements. And then I can share this diagram with other users by, um, you know, I can setting it up on a page, I can use the list view web part, um, things like that. And then as they say, what you can do is create different views uh, for each of your different process diagrams. What's great about this is that it's interactive. I can go in to this process diagram at any time. I can update the elements to get them to look however I want. And although it is managed through a SharePoint list, I don't have to manage this from the list view. I can do it directly from this Canvas style interface. Um, so for those of you guys who do things like use Visio or other programs outside of SharePoint and then go through a multi-step process to make updates and then export and then perhaps import to share in SharePoint, this might help save you some time. It can help you be a lot more efficient. Um, so as I mentioned, this is available for download from the SharePointDashboards.com site. This is the uh, flow chart tool. Um, which is closely related to a template which just released preceding this one, which is the um, org chart tool, um, which works in a very similar manner to this. All right, let's go on to our next step. All right, so Hopefully that's an interesting concept to you. The good thing is once you download your template and have it installed in your SharePoint environment, you can just continuously create more and more of these flowcharts. So this is great, especially in IT where it's very typical that you have a process, like the example I was giving with help tickets. Um, it's great for planning. A lot of times when you're getting started building a solution, and trying to think about uh, a process and how things are gonna work. It helps you to uh, maybe think about things in a more modular manner. It allows you to plan it and show it in a visual manner to your users. And it's also a great uh, informational tool. It's a way to help people understand, um, you know, to train them on a process, that type of thing. Um, so, Hope you find this interesting. Hope this is something you can bring into your SharePoint environment to make things more interesting and um, you know, be able to have something interactive that you can use to build out and plan your projects. Thank you very much.